thanks for having me here. Uh, I always like to get a good sense of the audience that I'm speaking to. How many people here are developers? Coding every day, great. How many people are uh, mobile developers? Great. How many people here think HTML5 sucks? <laughs> I'm one of them. Uh, I, what I like to start off with is just a quick demo uh, that I love to show uh, anybody who's either tried to tackle HTML5 or has been a native developer for a while. Um, and I kind of walk people through a little demo of something that you're not supposed to be able to do in HTML. Um, and for those of you who have an internet connection in an iPad or a computer, you can join along with me, or if you have an iPhone, uh, you can just go to famo.us and uh, play along with this exact same demo. Um, what we're looking at here isn't WebGL, it isn't Canvas, and it isn't CSS3. Um, and what it is, is pure HTML, uh, running at 60 frames per second. And I thought I'd walk you through a couple uh, examples of what we uh, built here to stress test a new method of development using a web browser with no plugins, no downloads, no nothing special. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the most difficult things uh, to do in mobile development is what's called infinite scroll view with momentum. It's what stopped Facebook cold and made them turn around and go back to native. Uh, an infinite scroll view with momentum is when you are scrolling through a list that has infinite new data uh, arriving at the bottom and you need to then resize that position, that data and do that all while in motion at 60 frames per second uh, without causing any what's called jitter or flicker. Uh, what we're seeing here is infinite scroll view in 3D. Um, and this can go in any direction. Um, another thing that is very, very difficult is interrupting an animation in the middle of the animation constructing itself. Uh, and a good example of that is when a user hits a menu item and then you slide stuff in, in the middle of that stuff sliding in, the user says, oh no, I want to go to a different menu item. So you have to deconstruct that animation, start a new animation coming in. Um, in CSS3, uh, this is all but impossible uh, to do without a flicker or a jitter. Um, and I can show you two examples of it that exist in this demo. One is I'm flicking this demo, and then I can plane it in 3D, um, touching it in real time, and then change and do a cross <coughs> transform. Um, and additionally, another thing, let's switch to a different shaker for a second, so we have a sphere here. Um, so say I want to construct a new MVC model view controller uh, 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 mode, on the fly, but then the user touches the screen and swipes it as the object is constructing itself. Uh, normally that's a complete uh, disaster um, uh, when doing that. So if I switch back to the other one and throw it in midstream, uh, you can see it actually took the throw and handled it uh, uh, for me. Being able to sh uh, switch then from different one MVC to another MVC is also very difficult to do. So in this example, uh, I'm taking my finger and touching the surface of the sphere and moving it around. Uh, but if I go inside the sphere, I just changed the controller uh, and inverted it because the actual physics that exists inside of a sphere is different than outside. But you saw no jitter, no flicker, and I'm still 60 frames per second. I can switch to a helix, and this is actually <laughs> spinning the helix on its proper axis, as you see here. Um, switch to what we call a wall of fame. Um, and the other thing that, that uh, we tried to do a stress test on here is the ability to navigate from and to any given item with five lines of code regardless of the shape that it is. So if I want to tap one of these objects and go to them, the code is no different in this model view controller framework, which we call Paraflow, than it is if I'm in a sphere and I'm touching this sphere. That's so all I'm doing is touching these objects here. So, <clears throat> what's going on here? You know, what is actually happening uh, in this demo that we're showing here? 
Uh, this runs 60 frames per second on any iPhone, iPad 1, 2, and 3, and it runs one at 60 frames per second in any Android device, uh, running Jelly Bean or Beyond, and on some ice cream sandwich devices if we kick it in the butt enough. Um, this also runs uh, at full performance on Samsung TVs that you currently buy at Best Buy today. Um, this will run anything inside of anything that runs either WebKit, uh, Firefox, Dolphin, uh, Microsoft, or Opera. Um, the reason I love showing this to native developers is because all native developers seem to have this viewpoint that um, HTML5 is slow or HTML is slow. And I love to get the reaction uh, from them because the reaction is almost universal. They're always like, what? What the hell is going on here? And what I'd like to do today is, is to take you guys through a two-year journey of what led us to be able to discover how to do uh, what you just saw in this little demo. And actually, this demo that I'm showing you is extremely old. It's eight months old. We're actually well beyond this. Um, and we're now capable of doing full physics models uh, and we're going to show you a little taste of that today as well. But rather than pumping any sort of product or anything like that today, I'm an engineer and I'd love to, to share the battles that I go through so other engineers can uh, not go through some of the battles that I go through. So what we're actually going to do is go through the actual lessons that we learned along the way and where we screwed up and where we came back from it and, and actually uh, learned what to do. So, um, just a, a brief bit about myself. Uh, I guess I'm best known for founding a company called PowerSet, which became Microsoft Bing. Um, but about two and a half years ago, I went to Reed Hoffman and I said, HTML5 is going to be a big deal if it could ever be performant. Give me a million dollars, let me spend two years with the smartest people at UC Berkeley and research how to really solve this problem uh, from solving its original sin uh, type of thing. But we actually started off with a consumer app idea, not trying to solve HTML5 in and of itself. We actually had an app idea which was basically Pinterest uh, at the time. Now what made our idea unique was uh, it had a very ambitious UI. Uh, we decided to build it in HTML5. We wanted it to work on iPad 1, 2, and 3, phones, tablets, PCs, game consoles, um, television sets. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, the clue here is game consoles is what led us to the, uh, the discovery at the end of the day. Um, we needed to work on iOS and Android uh, as a web app and as a native wrapper. These are very common goals of uh, people who are building apps these days. You want it to work everywhere, and you want it to work nicely, and you want it to work at 60 frames per second. We also wanted it to be able to handle many inputs, including touch, keyboard, mouse, and gesturing systems. Uh, how many people here have seen the Leap Motion device? Anybody? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So we were the first company to receive one, and we've been working with one uh, for a very, very long time now. But we saw a future where current Samsung TVs now sold at Best Buy include a, an Xbox Connect gesturing system. It's not made by Xbox, but it's Samsung's own. Leap is coming out, Microsoft is coming out better with better stuff, Sony's coming out with better stuff. And we saw a need to handle uh, an abstraction to handle all different types of input into any given application system. So we started off thinking that we knew everything, but we actually knew nothing. And this is sort of the age-old story of anyone who goes into HTML5. You hear all these great promises of HTML5. And then you immediately start hitting its limitations once you get past the demos. Um, I, for one, can say that I, I experienced a great deal of frustration when I saw jQuery Mobile or Sencha or AppSeller or any of these companies showing these demos that the minute you threw them on a weaker device, they started slowing down to 5 frames per second, 15 frames per second. And I just I felt like people were lying to me and telling me that it could do things that it actually couldn't do. And so, um, we basically hit every performance issue that you could possibly imagine because of the complexity of the app we were trying to build. Um, we battled through a lot of false promises. How many people here have done an HTML5 web app? And seen the, hey, if you want to stop, stop Flickr, just type in, uh, if you want to put it in the GPU, just type in translate Z0. If you want to remove Flickr, just say WebKit backface visibility equals hidden. 
I'd like to kill those people that said that. That's, that's just utter crap. It's just a misunderstanding of how the GPU works and how WebKit and WebCore works. We were frustrated. I like that image. Um, we learned a lot of things. I really wanted to share that journey with you today. Um, we ended up ditching the entire product as a result of our journey and then, fo and then fell in love with focusing on just performance. Um, so I'm definitely not pitching the product because we're not doing it. CSS3. Uh, so I wanted to share like really big realizations. I get in a lot of trouble for this first one. CSS3 shouldn't exist. It's a pile of crap and it's an abstraction violation. Um, they took the world of CSS, which is properly the world of the designer. It's properly the world where you take a wireframe and you add a design to it. And they added to that design uh, uh, paradigm performance things, things that belong to the engineering world. CSS3 transition primitives, the prime cause of all the problems that exist in performance. Um, and what happens is, is a designer needs now to uh, be able to interact with animations as part of their job now. 